Rochelle and I would like to welcome you to our kitchen. We'd like to say uh, happy Valentine's Day weekend and welcome to our first and hopefully not last. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> val Valentine's Day cooking class for everybody. So we're very happy to have all of you here with us. Um, we wanted just to uh, introduce you, maybe show you around the kitchen a little bit. For those of you, uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting about what we do for a living, what I do for a living, is I get to hear clients share with us uh, things about their family, things about things they're doing at their house, places they're traveling, and so forth. So we get to kind of talk about all of that tonight, because we've got family here. Uh, we've got on the big screen, I don't know if you can see this, Kaylee, up here, but up on the big screen in the background, we've got uh, a 4K video of Florence, Italy, one of our favorite places in the world. It's, uh, playing in the background, we thought that would be appropriate. Um, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the kitchen to start. So um, you wanna share a little bit about, about the kitchen? Our journey of the kitchen. Um, so it started five years ago and um, we talked to one designer and wasn't happy and then another designer wasn't happy. And then I found on, um, house.com it's an app that you can use on your either your phone or um log on on the, the computer uh and it will cost you money if you <laughs> log into that. so please talk to your financial advisor first so and I, so anyway i found this amazing sink called the galley kitchen and we found the sink and then we found the only distributor in ohio who just happens to be in twinsburg who happens to own a uh, kitchen and bath design studio, who happens to be named Chip. So we had Chip, but no Joanna. And um, so my sink. So Kaylee, I don't know if you can see it, but I can kind of show you a little bit where my sink has different levels. And so this is the colander that we'll use. I have different pieces where I can actually make it into cutting board surface and and then I can even take these um, black uh, slate pieces pieces yeah. <laughs> and actually close the entire sink off and make it go away and make it a serving area make it a complete serving area and then you can write on these and stuff like that so my sink I love my sink and um, did anybody out there catch how many times she said my in one <laughs> sentence? The rest of it's our kitchen, but it's for it's my sink. <laughs> so, uh, so with that, and, and you know, one of my favorite stories about this kitchen is we started, we started designing it, you know, thinking about remodeling the kitchen in 2015, uh, 2016. And then in 2016, a uh, certain couple across the room got married and that took up a couple of dollars. And then I bought the building on fourth street uh, in the falls, and that took a couple of dollars in 16 and 17. In 2018, our beautiful daughter Sedona got married, and that took a couple of dollars. And yeah. then by the time we got to 2019, the plans that Rochelle liked in, in 2016, <laughs> she had two and a half years of watching HGTV, and those were no longer good enough. So, uh, so anyways, it's been a uh, process. So you'll get to see more of the kitchen as we uh, as we move along tonight. So uh, we talked about the Florence uh, video. We also, before we get uh, too far down the road, we want to make sure we have the proper uh, music. I don't know how much you can hear it because, um, you know, we don't want to have it so loud that it drowns us out. But since it is Valentine's Day weekend, we, we always look for a selection of great artists like Harry Connick Jr. Frank Sinatra, we've got Frank Sinatra Swing and Affair, we've got Frank Sinatra Ring-a-Ding-Ding, -ding. and we've got, of all places, uh, all things, we've got uh, Love Songs from Nat King Cole. So for us, we put that out there on Pandora, on the Frank Sinatra station, so we'll get different music all night, all appropriate for Valentine's Day. So, And since it is Valentine's Day, we thought we'd do one other thing that was not on the list, and we'll send this along to everybody afterwards. You want to talk about where we found this uh, this drink recipe? Yeah, so when we were in Milan in um, 2019. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, when we could all leave our houses and stuff. Um, we were staying at the, I don't Excelsior remember. Hotel, Excelsior next to the big, Hotel. Next to the big train station. Yes, and it was 
ridiculously warm. And so we went to the bar and told the bartender that we needed something refreshing. So, Ready? yep. He created these, they're called Monte Carlos, and it's bourbon, orange bitters, and Prosecco. Bourbon, just a little bit in the bottom, just for some flavor. And then uh, a little bit of orange bitters in each glass, two bitter, two, uh, two drops. And then just fill them to the top slowly with the <laughs> Prosecco, Italian Prosecco, which is a sparkling wine. It's not champagne because champagne only comes from Rochelle. France. <laughs> from the Champagne region of France, which French girl next to me, whose mom was born in France, by the way, our beautiful, uh, Rochelle's beautiful mom, Evelyn, I believe is watching from, uh, from Mexico. Kaylee, can you look at the attendee list and tell Let's us? See. Do we have Evelyn in the house? She may be having technical difficulties. Well, she, she is. Maybe in, because I don't have my phone. She is in Mexico. Yes. So we're not sure what the internet uh, is like <laughs> down south of Guadalajara. Where if you want to tell them where your mom lives? Uh, it's Ajijic, and it is a uh, retirement community, like Jesse said, 30 minutes south of Guadalajara in Mexico. And she moved there a year ago, two, about a year, year and a half. Year yeah, about a year and a half ago. And, Seems to love it. It's a, so, yeah, it's a uh, expat community. It's got uh, people living there from what, 27 different countries, mm -hmm. something like that. So, uh, so with that, here, I'll just pass them along over okay. there. Zach and Kay. Thank you very much. All right. Do you guys want to come over here for just one second? And uh, so we can introduce, I know everybody saw Kaylee briefly <laughs> at the beginning. But, uh, but uh, our videographers, and by the way, tonight, uh, you are not allowed, we're not allowed to for compliance purposes, even though this, uh, even though this has nothing to do with investments or financial markets, compliance does not allow me to use the chat function, but we are allowed to use the Q&A button. So anybody who has Q&A, who has questions, uh, wants to raise their hand uh, and so forth. Hit the Q&A button. Zach will be monitoring that, feeding questions over to us. Feel free to do that throughout the night. Kaylee's going to be running the video. The dog's on the couch. We'll get a picture of the dog here in just a second for anybody who wants to see her. She's just completely uh, happy that all of you are on Zoom and not in the house here with us. So with that, cheers. Happy cheers. Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day. 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 There you go. There you go. All right, guys. Mm, fantastic. There you go. So <laughs> we will send out the recipe for this. And um, real quick, can we tell them about the cake? We're going to talk about the cake now. You want to talk about cake when it comes time for dessert? Okay, well, we'll have to wait. We'll be surprised. <laughs> All right, there'll be cake at the end, and we'll send out the recipe for that also. So we've gotten through um, setup for tonight. You want to talk about format? Yeah, so I went ahead and kind of pre. Uh, you know, pre-measured everything and laid everything out so that we could kind of talk to you rather than cut and potentially have some sort of issue. Um, but the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna do the pesto first, then the arrabbiata sauce, and then the carbonara. And the reason that we do it in that order is this can sit, the pesto can sit as long as it needs to. This simmers while you're doing the carbonara and the carbonara goes pretty quickly, so. And in between the uh, Raviata and the carbonara, you're going to do a special. Yeah, because Jesse has to have protein with every meal. No carbs, no carbs alone. You have to have carbs with protein. <laughs> so this time I'm going to saute some shrimp. Um, we've done this with scallops and we've also done it with uh, just chicken. Which is chicken. So yeah. all of these sauces go great with pretty much everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, take the okay. drink and uh, you can, uh, you can start. Okay, so we're going to start with the pesto. You want me to move this no, I'm just going to go over here. So the first thing that you have to do is you've got to toast your pine nuts, which is pretty easy. Like, it takes a couple of minutes, and all you're really waiting is for them to just get kind of fragrant and change colors just a little, get a little brown, a little toasty looking. Um, while this is doing um, its cooking thing, you have to chop up 
We a whole have, lot of basil. Hey, Rochelle, <laughs> we have one client who is struggling to get in. I'm going to try to go fix that. Okay. Oh, gosh, I'm alone. So <laughs> you're not alone. We're here. <laughs> so you chop up the basil. And the beauty of this pesto is, number one, it tastes amazing. But number two, super easy. No cooking except for this. And then um, you can actually keep it in your refrigerator for about a week. So not that we ever have much leftover, um, but when we do have stuff left over, we've actually put it in eggs the next morning, which is pretty amazing. So can you freeze it, Rachel? Um, have you ever tried? I've never tried. Yeah. I'm just curious what the olive oil would do. Sure. So, um, oh, and that's one thing Jesse wanted me to tell you. So we, in our trip, when we were in Milan, before we went to Milan, we went to Chiquitera and we found Found this little little shop, and um, you can actually buy like amazing olive oil from there. Um, you can get prosecco shipped to you in Ohio. Every state has different laws, but when you're making pesto, you want to do you want to use really high end olive oil because that's really the, the main flavor that you're going to have. So you see. <laughs> Any questions or anything, Zach? We have no questions on the board yet. Feel free to <laughs> submit them as you wish. Hey, Kayla, do we want to give a quick shout out to the dog? Zoom Our in dog on the doggy. So while, while, while the pine nuts are cooking and while we hopefully get everybody in the shots. Try not to make everybody sick as I go here. <laughs> this is Kaylee. Hi, honey, bunny. Come say hi to Kate. <laughs> Are you nervous? I know. I know you don't like being on camera, but but Stasi's here. Stasi's in the house. She wants to say hi. Stasi loves Kay. So, all right. You can go back and lay down. We'll see you later. All right. We'll save some extras. For you. Hey, while you're coming back, you can kind of yeah the pantry and a, a different angle from the kitchen here. <laughs> And the pantry. I hope we, we've reset a Zoom link and reset a passcode to clients multiple times here tonight. So hopefully, hopefully we have everybody in. We've now got uh, Nat King Cole doing L-O-V-E, which is a perfectly appropriate Valentine's Day uh, song. Very appropriate question. How is Stasi feeling? Oh, uh, good question. That is a good question. So in, on November 3rd. No, on election day. On, on election November day, Stasi underwent what they call TPLO surgery, which is basic uh, knee reconstruction for the dog. It was a very long eight week recovery. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but she's doing really well now. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know Stasi, Stasi is a, uh, she is a um, 60 pound part pit bull, part American bulldog and part greyhound mix. So she's got the size and musculature of a pit bull, but she runs like a greyhound and she blew out her knee. And, uh, if somebody had told this financial planner that he'd be spending multiple thousands of dollars on dog knee, knee repair surgery, he would not have believed it, but he did. He did. Because he loves his wife. <laughs> and his dog. Yeah, so. All right. So. Next question from Rob Moretti. Do you guys deliver the drinks? He's asking for a friend. <laughs> we uh, generally do not drive with drinks. We don't drink on drink and drive, but we also do not uh, deliver drinks. Um, but you are always welcome to come over because uh, you're we, not far. <laughs> we, you're, you're not far. We've got a pretty uh, pretty well stocked uh, uh, liquor bar, and we've got a very well stocked wine cellar. So. Uh, um, we're a different class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we can do a we can actually do a, a, a bourbon tasting or a wine class at some point if anybody would like. You know, feel free to send suggestions. Um, other than that, um, have you talked at all about our trips to Italy? No, but yeah. 
real quick. All right. So what you do is you kind of let these cool a little bit, um, but then you pour everything into your food processor. Doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's all going to get blended. That smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> One, one of the best things about cooking Italian is your house smells amazing. So Rochelle, we have a question here. Do you, you mostly use wooden spoons for most of your cooking? <laughs> so funny, for Christmas, I got everybody a set of spurtles. So I have a big one, big one, and the medium sized one. And spurtles are awesome because they're not like spoons. They can get into more of your corners. Right, Zach? <laughs> exactly. We're very pro spurtle in this family. <laughs> Except the big one. The big one scares me. It kind of reminds me of kindergarten when I got in trouble a lot. So, all right. What else are we putting in, Rochelle? So we're putting in the olive oil. Kind of pouring it on top. Sure Jesse, do you remember how much the olive oil is not really expensive? No, no, it's, but it's, I'm telling you, the olive oil from over there in Chiquitera is really good. And olive oil from different regions has different flavors. So, um, you know, some of it's much more golden buttery, some of it is much more green and grassy. It just depends on, it's a lot like wine, it's a lot where it's grown, it's a lot. Uh, the soil that it's grown in, the sunlight that it gets, and so forth. Yes, um, and then we, you can use as much or as little of the red pepper flakes as you want. Um, we don't use that much because um, we, we do hot food. <laughs> because you're cooking and you don't like it that much. Yeah, so, but feel free to add more. And then we're just going to blend this. Michelle, what kind of food processor are you using? It's a KitchenAid. It's just a tiny, small KitchenAid. Okay. And one of the rules in our house is whoever's not cooking is cleaning so that when we're done cooking, we can sit down and enjoy a meal together and not have a kitchen. And there you go. Here is your pasta. And what kind of olive oil did we use in that again? Extra virgin or pure? We use extra virgin Italian olive oil. If we're not using this, we can normally. Ask you a yeah. How do they know? Stop. Normally <laughs> use that. <laughs> Right there. So. And then all we do is you just set this aside and it'll be ready when you're ready. Right. Looks like uh, Eric Schamberger is ready to come over if we're doing bourbon. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. At some point, could we switch to Zach? If Zach ran downstairs and. Uh, and show the, uh, we could show the bourbon rack from downstairs. Michelle and I have been on the bourbon trail twice for her 50th birthday. If anybody's, if nobody's ever been to Louisville, Louisville is really a fun city. So, so we've been there for um, Michelle's 50th birthday for the bourbon trail. And then we were to Louisville and Lexington for the Kentucky Derby, what, two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago with my business partner, Peter J. Bush down at uh, Horizon, Horizon Wealth Management down in Baton Rouge. So, do you want to show them one last thing? Do you want to show them your favorite drawer that came out of this? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. This is also hers. This is completely so, hers. I have nothing to do with it. This is my idea. So, we had this weird Lazy Susan thing that took up a lot of space and spices would fall in the back and you couldn't get them. So, when I was talking to our designer, I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. So, hence the drawer that you can always get stuff. <laughs> yep. 
proven to be very helpful, both in terms of locating stuff and both and for your back. So uh, <laughs> with that, one of the things we did not say earlier, can I have that? thank you, is that one of the things we've learned from the cooking classes that we've done anywhere that we've done them, uh, even the ones we've done here, even the Italian cooking classes that we've done here locally, is they always say, all good Italian chefs always say, your pasta water should be salty like the sea. So it should be, don't hesitate to make it nice and salty. And, uh, and that way um, you get good flavor in your pasta. And uh, we're gonna start the arrabbiata sauce now. Now, one of the things we have to do, do you want that on there? Yeah. Yeah, do that. One of the things we learned when we did our kitchen is having marble on your island has its advantages and disadvantages. So. <laughs> It just says shrimp. Yeah. Okay. So when we did this exact cooking class about a month ago with an iron chef, maybe it was a little longer than yeah. that. But anyway, um, you'll notice that I said on our recipe that you need to um, crush these by hand. And it sounds gross, but apparently in Italy, you have to do that so that your sauce, they know your sauce is made with love. So, I always get to do this. <laughs> so when it says we always make sure that the uh, that the uh, tomatoes are crushed by hand, when we say we, we really mean for sure. <laughs> so uh, with the arrabbiata or with the uh, yeah, with the arrabbiata sauce. I think it's over there. No, it's right there. Oh, okay. I've got a second copy of it right here. Right. So it says three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Three tablespoons is about a quarter cup. So. You know, for me, I don't really measure stuff much when I cook. I like being intuitive when we cook. So, uh, so we start with that, get this nice and warm. And then one of the things that we'll do next is put in the red pepper flakes and just let the red pepper flakes roast. Letting the red pepper flakes roast in the uh, olive oil, and then we'll add the onions and the garlic. Your kitchen will smell amazing, but, um, so again, this is one of those where depending on how hot you want it, it calls for three teaspoons or which would be one tablespoon of red pepper flakes uh, because Rochelle, do you want to explain the difference between French and Italian cooking? Well, French food is... And your mom was born in France. France. So you grew up I, eating Yeah, French I grew cooking. up with very buttery, rich, saucy food. Um, not a lot of spices. At all. Which explains why I have a saucy wife. <laughs> Come on. Well, I don't right even there. know what to say to that. So, <laughs> so he tones down the spices for me, much to uh, Kaylee's. <laughs> <laughs> more red pepper flakes. <laughs> yeah. Kaylee always likes more red pepper flakes. So now that you got your olive oil nice and warm, we'll get uh, we'll get probably a good two uh two or more of the red pepper flakes in the sauce and really it's just a matter of letting those uh oh you want to talk about your spice rack oh well we have my spice rack which is of course an outside of order because anybody who's ever met jesse would expect no less <laughs> Yeah, if, if things aren't in alphabetical order, if things, if, for all of you who've been in my office and you know what it looks like, you know that it's always me and um, the office is always neat. Karen, uh, most of you know, Karen, my, my lead assistant, who I affectionately call my boss, uh, always tells me, I think Karen and Ross are out there watching tonight, so Ross... Yeah, this is the way your wife talks to me when she's at work. She always says, you know, I'm pretty sure there's medication available for people like you. So, uh, so we know it. I live it. I understand it. I own it. I'm okay with it. So, I was going to say, she says it. She says she does it. So, um, with that, anything else in the question and answer? 
Uh, no, a couple things submitted through chat. So just make sure you're using the Q&A um, versus raising your hand or using the chat and we'll take a look at your questions. Anything, uh, anything of interest over there that came in that way, Zach? I had a comment about wooden spoons, I think. Yeah, wooden spoons. A couple comments in the chat about uh, lemon cello. Uh, oh, <laughs> do, we have, do we have the Hyman Bickham crew in the, uh, in the room? There's some in the uh, That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's some in the freezer. It's not mine, but we actually had this brought in from the same place I was telling you about. Um, so for those who don't know, there's there's two things that I make. Um, I make homemade limoncello and I make homemade Kahlua. And I haven't done the Kahlua in a long time, but the limoncello, the uh, Heinz and Bickham's. By the way, Rochelle, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. But once this red pepper flake gets down to about, uh, you know, you want to let it cook for um, Just a minute or two, let it get some flavor. You know what? I think I'm just going to use the slotted spoon. Okay. Okay, once you do that, add in the onion. We'll let the onion cook in here for a couple of minutes, let it get translucent, and then we'll add the uh, garlic. I can confirm it smells excellent in here. <laughs> okay. Keep that on a medium high heat for a couple of minutes, but go ahead. Your limoncello, you've done it both ways. I've done it with um, vodka and I've done it with grain alcohol. And um, which you had to show a driver's license for and show that you weren't from Alabama. Yeah, it, it, it was very weird. Um, I prefer it with the vodka, but others prefer it with the, um, the grain alcohol. But yeah, when you buy grain alcohol, you do have to get a copy of your driver's license <laughs> to get it, which is a little unnerving. <laughs> so yeah, so um, uh, like I said, we've got some here because uh, I'm sure Brad Heim is the one that asked that. Um, Was that Brad Heim that asked that question? Brad or Kim? Yes. All um, right, from the limoncello. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so we actually had some brought in. I haven't made any this year, but um, we, we actually had some brought in for the same place to bring the olive oil. I didn't realize you had the olive oil. Yeah. I have everything set for you. <laughs> I just poured it out of the thing and now there's extra. We're going to have to use the funnel and put it back away because we cannot waste <laughs> that. So, uh, so we have a follow up. We need to um, understand again the difference between French and Italian cooking. We learned what French is. What is the difference with Italian? So Italian cooking is how would you just, he's, he's more of the Italian chef. So I think you add, you have more flavor. You have yeah, more, way more flavor. Yeah. Uh, and not necessarily more um, spice, right? It's more, you know, instead of like when, when we're doing um, the bolognese sauce that, that yeah, I love yeah. to make, mm -hmm. right? The, the base of most, the base of most Italian, um, pasta sauces is carrot, celery, onion, and instead of using other things that make things sweet. So you get natural sweetness and some texture from, from those flavors. And so um, I love cooking Italian. I mean, like it's I, your favorite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you and I have actually uh, won a couple of cooking awards at local celebrity cook-offs and so forth. We have for some, so I make these um, appetizers, uh, they're pancetta crisps, where you take sliced pancetta with spinach, goat cheese, and figs with some fig jam, and they're amazing, and everybody at Grapes and Gourmet Guys thought so too. <laughs> yeah, so we won, we won Best in Show, and we won, uh, we won, uh, what was it? People's Choice People's Award. People's Choice and, choice and Judges' Award. Choice, yeah. And, Two of the three. And, uh, uh, a local young executive from Ohio, Edison from First Energy, one time was over and said it was the best thing that he's ever put in his mouth, which was a little weird. But uh, so we're going to add, we're going to add now that we've got the uh, now that we've got the tomatoes and garlic and red peppers. We are going to add the hand crushed tomatoes that were hand crushed by my beautiful bride Rochelle, 
and literally it is not much more difficult than that. It will simmer for probably 20, 25 minutes. Um, do you want me, while that's simmering, Rochelle, do you want me to, yeah, that's just extra, I'm sorry. I didn't well, realize okay. that was it. So, um, do you want me, while that's simmering for 20, 25 minutes, do you want, before we do the shrimp, do you want to talk, do I do shrimp first, shrimp and pasta first, and then we'll talk wine, or do you want to talk wine? We talk wine. Okay. Because the right. shrimp doesn't take that long. The shrimp doesn't take that long, and the pasta doesn't take that long. That Pardon. was a question. And before we talk wine, we are getting several requests for the pancetta crisp recipe. So if we get that send it. sent around as well. Yes, I will send the, it. The pancetta crisp recipe is one of the best things I have ever, ever had. Well, the problem is it's very difficult to find the pancetta rounds. So Heinen sometimes has them. Giant Eagle doesn't carry them anymore. Um, I've actually resorted to possibly buying it on Amazon. <laughs> do what you got to do, Rashad. Right. <laughs> Not sure we want to support Jeff. Hey, how do you know that your wife has a problem with Amazon Prime? I found this out. You know your wife has a problem with Amazon Prime when the UPS person comes to the house and you're not home and they leave a treat for your dog on the box because they're here so often they know your dog. So that's actually a true story. Um, it is a true story. <laughs> one other thing, one other thing that I would share about this sauce as it simmers is um, even though Rochelle crushed it with her hands and so forth, it'll continue to cook, you know, cook down and so forth. But every time you stir it, I'm using a, a, you know, a spoon with holes in it. You can use a slotted spoon, you can use whatever. But anytime you find big chunks, I just try to crush them down a little bit and just continue to get like a little bit more consistency to the sauce. It's okay having, uh, you know, it's okay having some texture to it, but you probably don't want to have giant chunks. Um, Are you saying I did this question? No, 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 no. You did an awesome job crushing. So, uh, and then we'll talk some wine. Any other questions, Zach? Nothing on the chat board right now. Nothing on the chat board right now. So, uh, all right. So we're going to talk wine here in just a second. Um, but I couldn't talk wine with that on the camera because of my OCD. So, uh, so our pasta water is bubbling right along and ready to have pasta thrown in it. One thing that we did also cheat on was the pasta. So, one other thing that we did cheat on, I hate to say cheat on, but, um, we are using, we a lot of times from just down the street at Giant Eagle, we buy um, fresh pasta um, and we get the fettuccine or sometimes we get the- Wait, linguine. This is all they have this time. So. Yeah. So we're, we'll be using fettuccine. Sometimes we use linguine. Sometimes we get the pappardelle when we're doing the bolognese mm -hmm. sauce. It cooks in like two minutes. Yep. So, you know, as a matter of fact, while I start to talk wine, if you're cooking at home, and your pasta is gonna take eight or 10 minutes to cook, you can go ahead and throw your pasta in your water that is hot and salty like the sea and let it go. And then we're gonna talk uh, wine for a couple of minutes. Are you done with Well, unless we were gonna tear some for the variety okay. of the sauce, we can leave that out there. Okay. All right, so for a night like tonight where we're cooking, um, where we're cooking um, with lighter sauces, things that are not overly heavy, and you're serving it with shrimp or scallops or even chicken. You wanna have wine that has um, berry flavors, you want red, red fruit flavors, but you also want some texture things. You'll hear things um, said, like, I'll, I'll tell you about this here. Let me, uh, if anybody has never seen the app, Bovino, is that good? Can you see that? Uh, it went white. It went white. <laughs> I don't think I can get it back to its. Uh, let me go back to the home page. So icon. it's the home page. It's called Vivino. V I V N I N O. So V I V I N O. 
It's one of our favorite apps. And literally, if you want to know something about a wine, here, I'm going to demonstrate this over here, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can literally put a wine bottle, hit the, uh, hit the picture app, pop this up, take a picture, hit use, and it will come up and it will say, so me, if you have good Wi-Fi, it'll say voila, and it will tell you everything about this wine. It will tell you about the winery. It'll tell you where it's made. It will give you reviews. It'll give you rankings. It'll tell you about the type. It'll tell you food. And it'll give you winemaker notes. It's a free app. It's probably something I've learned the most about Italian wine from, uh, oh, about any wine, any, any, any wine. Yeah. But uh, so, you know, wines that you could use tonight, there's, uh, there is uh, Barolo, which we have here, which I just showed you. Barolo is an Italian wine uh, from the Piedmont region of Northern Italy. And uh, the Italian wine that's up there is made of Nebbiola grapes. Um, Barolo is probably the top style. There's Nebbiola, uh, there's Barbaresco, and then there's Barola that all tend to be made from the same grapes. Tends to be a little dry. Uh, give you a couple of things here that it talks about when you read the uh, winemaker notes. It says ruby red colors, aroma of red fruits, plums, pine needles, and brushwood. Not that everybody would love to eat pine needles and brushwood, but Barolo is definitely a lighter wine. It's not super heavy. It's not super dry. It's not something you would have with a really heavy pasta, a really heavy uh, lasagna, or um, even like an Italian meat, you know, like yeah. a steak. What's the, the steak Florentine? Steak Florentine. So you want to tell them about the, the night, our first yeah. night in... Um, what was the name of the place? We were in Florence. I will find it. Yeah, we were in Florence, and it's really funny because a lot of people that we had talked to saying that we were going to go to Florence um, told us you have to go to the certain place to get their steak Florentine. And um, so we went and this steak comes out that's enormous. And so it's we about share what, it. an inch and a half thick. And yeah. It's, and it's literally seared on each side. Oh. It's just, it's just you know rare. what kind of steak it is? Uh, um, hold on, I'm getting the name of the restaurant. I can only do so many things at once. Remember, I'm a guy. Uh, Buca Mario. Buca Mario. Buca Mario in, in uh, Florence, Italy. Yeah, so we. This is the way the steak, steak, steak is comes out. Can you see that, Kay? You can see it, yeah. It's yeah. a little blurry, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, anyways, it's yeah. fabulous. <laughs> Which Jesse also makes. Yeah. <laughs> also yeah. fabulous. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. That's that's a summer grilling, do it out on the grill type thing. So anyways, you you know, you can do a much heavier, drier wine. You can do a cab. You can do a cab Sangiovese mix. You can do something like that. Another favorite wine of Rochelle's that we won't be doing tonight because it's really heavy, but we had to talk about it because anytime you talk about Italian wine in my house, you have to talk about Amarone because Amarone is Rochelle's favorite Italian wine. It is. is there a reason why? It, I, it tastes amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's really um, fruit forward. It's very fruit forward. It's not overly dry. But and it's got a ton of flavor. It, it does have a ton of flavor. And, and the reason it has a ton of flavor is Amarone is made from a number of grapes, but uh, Corbina grapes is the primary of most Amarones. And what they do, which is really interesting, that's different from most other wines, is they actually pick the best grapes. They put them on screens and let them air dry for anywhere from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. So the grapes become almost like small, like small grapes, almost raisin-like, and it super concentrates the fruit and the flavors. And so it tastes like raisin plum. Um, but I wouldn't but, say overly sweet. Like, no, no, it's not yeah, overly that, sweet. That kind of implies it could be overly sweet, but it's not. Right. It, it's, it's an amazing flavor. And by the way, every one of these wines that we're showing you tonight's 25 to $40 a bottle. It's not stupid expensive. I mean, it's there. It's not, it's not, you know, like the stuff from college or before, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, 
I know Rob's in the house, so uh, you know it's not like the stuff from back then. But uh, so then, uh, other than that, we're not using last names, only first names. Rob, um, then you can only <laughs> then you can um, then we've got Chianti Classico, Chianti region of uh, of Tuscany. And these are made from Sangiovese grapes. This is a very good wine. This is one that most people are familiar with. But the wine we're actually having tonight, and I'll do the same thing here. This is a Brunello di Montalcino. This is also from the Tuscany region, but it's from Montalcino. Um, I love Brunello. And um, if we go here and we take a picture of this, by the way, um, Vivino scores on a five-star basis. Anything four star and above is really good. This is at 4.4 stars, 135 ratings. So it's not like three people liked it. 134 ratings, 4.4 star, which would probably be the equivalent of like 93 or 94 on Wine Spectator. And it's $34 a bottle. So it's not crazy expensive uh, to find something like that. So because we really like to do good things with really good Italian wine, we opened this up a couple of hours ago. <laughs> we got we got Kaylee smiling over there. We must be getting interesting questions. So, if in addition to the pancetta, Chris, if we could also circulate the names of the wines, that would be great. Yep, um, we can we can share some wines. The unnamed Rob is making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have we have comments coming in from the unnamed Rob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, have, we have Rob to be named later. So, so the uh, the Brunello. We opened this uh couple of hours ago. And then what we did was for about 30 minutes before we uh, were ready to serve, we put it in the fridge just to take it off room temperature, get a little chill to it. And then we decanted it. So this is what we will be having with dinner tonight. So it is sitting over here decanted and aerated and uh, ready to go. So with that, any other, uh, any other questions tonight or at this point, Zach? No, we've answered a couple of them offline, uh, just confirming that we use the San Marzano tomatoes yep. Um, yep. in the sauce currently. Yep. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it right now. Do you use a special decanter of any kind? We do use. Yeah, we use the ones from uh, Kaylee and Kaylee's <laughs> wedding shower. <laughs> These are actually old milk bottles that we use as decanters, but we do have an aerator that we use, so it just, Air, once you open a bottle of wine, as long as you're going to serve it sometime in the next six to 12 hours, air is wine's friend. It will continue to open, it will continue to get more flavor. So if you aerate it, you know, we opened it a couple hours ago, it sits in the fridge, gets a little chill, then we, then we uh, decant it with the aerator. It will continue every once in a while. As a matter of fact, I take that off. Every once in a while, you can come over and just stir it a little bit, let it get some more air. And then, uh, Rochelle, I think we're ready. I was going to throw the pasta in, and you can throw the, uh, do the shrimp, and then we'll do the carbonara last. Talk about the dessert. We go from there. All right. All right. Yes. Anything else? So, in your personal opinion, is wine better from the glass or just straight out of the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Another unnamed. <laughs> up above Zach you want to point that out I'm it's quite throw, extensive I'm gonna throw the uh, pasta in here let's cook for a couple minutes yes we can yeah. move that back all the way up to the margarita glasses <laughs> always good always a good thing which always those happen to be some of Kaylee's favorite glasses mm, absolute favorite yes Kaylee, what's your nickname <laughs> it may or may not be tequila K, and I may or may not have a t-shirt about it. <laughs> All right, I am going to uh, throw in the uh, pastas, let them cook. The nice thing, like I said about this is, these pastas take just a couple of minutes to cook, and then we'll be ready to do the carbonara. About the same time that Michelle's done with the shrimp. Yep. Do we have one of the bags? 
We want, yeah. We, we need right. a close up on the bag of it's pasta. Giovanni Roma, Rana. So you can pick this up at Giant Eagle. Um, we use all their pastas. They're good. And and they say you can actually freeze them. You can throw them in the freezer if you want. I do freeze them. From, from time to time. Although it's very rare that we don't use pasta when we want. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes I buy too much or... Yeah. Do I tell them about the whole basil thing of today? What did I buy? <laughs> Twice Three as much, as much basil as, as needed. As needed. But. I normally buy the large containers of basil from Buckeye Farms or something like that. And they didn't have them. They only had the small ones. And so I wasn't exactly sure how much from a small one would translate into the big one. So I bought 12, 12 packages of basil. Kaylee's taking so, five home. home. So, 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 so <laughs> basically, if none of you were able to get enough basil it's to make fault. your pesto, it's because <laughs> Rochelle bought out the entire store. It's my fault. Or maybe you bought it and I couldn't get it. <laughs> and were all the ingredients, including the tomatoes, bought at the local Giant Eagle? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Nothing overly difficult, so. Now these are super easy things to make. But the flavor is amazing. Yeah. Yep. Don't forget your water. Don't forget my water. Tell them. Okay, don't this is really, water. really, really important. So I'm going to count on Rochelle and Zach and Kaylee to not let me forget this. I always, we found that it's best practice to put this in your colander so that before you pour out the water that you need some of this for to make your carbonara if you put this right inside here you won't forget because it's a bad idea to not have additional pasta water when you're making your carbonara well there's if you if by chance you did uh, what I did pour it all time. out yes you can you just pour it all out <laughs> Then you can actually just put hot water inside of the pan that you cooked your pasta, pasta in and kind of squish it around and then you'll create not as strong but you can you can recover from you, you can, it's, it's an error but it's not a fatal error so what would you say is the optimal ratio for sauce to pasta Ooh. Not a personal Ooh. Preference. That, that's personal preference if it's really good sauce i like good sauce um, if it's bolognese sauce, I'm like one to one. I like I like the meat bolognese sauce, but Rochelle's Rochelle <laughs> Rochelle is. Uh, am I allowed to say you're not as saucy as I am? Sure. <laughs> I think you just. Did. That sounds a little weird, <laughs> but whatever you want. So so. Zach, can you pull out wine glasses? Yeah. Thank you. Or margarita glasses. <laughs> Pretty sure wine would go better <laughs> with this, but. So, all right, what are you doing, Rochelle? Are you talking to them about your? Uh... I am. So I just put olive oil in the pan, some garlic, and some salt and pepper, and I'm just gonna saute the shrimp until it's done. Easy peasy. Yep. All right. So with this, it's one of my reasons I like using this contraption is I can get a couple of pieces of pasta and then usually when I think the pasta is done, Michelle tells me to cook it one more minute. But I am, while I'm thinking about it, going to get my pasta water. For my carbonara. Don't need a bunch, just need a cup or so. But it is best if you get the water directly from here to be able to use. We'll let that cook for one more minute. And then um, just trying to think out loud, Michelle. I usually use that same pan. The same pan that I use that for is the same pan I use this, so yeah. that's okay. This will be fine. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of pans. Yeah. So, any other questions coming in? What is your favorite region of Italy when you were traveling? So we were talking about this before. <laughs> yeah. We started. Um, All the bourbon was at the bottom of my drink. <laughs> <laughs> Never good. Um, I don't know. I was okay with this, but I just wasn't expecting So I, so two different. So I love Florence because it's beautiful and the history, the, the architecture, the art, the art museum is just stunning. Like you can just walk for hours and yeah. hours and hours. Well, in, in a lot of places, but in yeah. Florence, it's just gorgeous. But I would say if you want to shop, you have to go to Milan. Yeah. Um, now, but I will say we took a, we, we did a, um, a tour with uh, Chiara. Chiara. By the and, way, do I talk about CH? Yeah, CH in Italian is Chi, like Chianti. So her name was C-H-A-R-A. -A, or I, 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 Yeah, and, and so. Are we good now? Yeah, we made the mistake of calling her, you know, not Chiara, and she call, very call, quickly. <laughs> you call her Chiara. She is not happy. She was not happy. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Juan, there is a ton of history, and it's a very interesting city because bombings from World War II and uh, World War II bombings took out 60, 70% of the city. And they have actually maintained it um, to kind of capture the history of, of the city. So it's kind of interesting that you would we, walk down the street. Are we allowed to talk about cancel culture? No. Are we allowed to get political? No. So, you know, for, for places that, that want to cancel history, tear down statues, the people in Milan were all about making sure that they maintained the history of what happened when Germany attacked in uh, World War II so that they could remember it, learn from what Hitler and Mussolini did so it never happened again. Yeah, this, is, it was just weird. Like you would walk down the street and the front of a building would be amazing and then you would walk around the side and it's gone. Like it's just a shell in the front and then the side is completely bombed out. Um, so, and I would say that the Duomo in Milan is pretty amazing. Yeah, the Duomo in Milan was actually, um, let me use a bit of right there. Yeah, I'll just use some of this. The, the Duomo in Milan, the Duomo in Milan was built over 400, 400 years, 400, maybe even longer than that, 450 years. All right, we're going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. I was just saving this for later. I really didn't forget to use it earlier. Um, and uh, oh, by the way, this will be the good news for the rest of it. The pastas in the colander, I always put a little bit of olive oil in with this to help. You know, a lot of times you hear people talk about putting your pasta in your colander and rinsing it. I think that's a bad idea. You spend all that time getting some salt flavor in it. You don't want to rinse that off, but you also don't want it to stick. So a little bit of um, adding a little bit of olive oil. I might add just a touch more to that. Um, helps just a little bit. Can you um wow. can I? We got uh we got that's all from uh Aww. yeah it's kind of a special song to me and Michelle. That was a song that uh Shane sang our, at our son wedding. our son Shane sang at our wedding. So multiple versions of it from multiple people, but it's a special song for Rochelle and I, so that's appropriate for Valentine's Day. Um uh, <laughs> Just need to do this. I just need to cook the pancetta. So we'll take the uh, olive oil and the pancetta, the olive oil and the butter. Do the pancetta here in just a minute. This this whole carbonara thing actually does not take very long to make. It is. So I'm trying to remember, Rochelle. What did you tell them in the recipe? 
Did they, you tell them bacon or pancetta? Yes. All right. I personally like using this. This is uh, pre-cut, uncured pancetta. It makes things simple. When you got multiple burners going and multiple entrees going at once, I'm all for simple keeping things, let's not complicate things that don't need to be complicated. So, but the uh, Duomo in Milan was built over a 400, 450 year time period. Yes. You took all those parts up. Did they even get to see how pretty the place settings were before? Oh, when you went and saw the dog. Oh, okay. When we saw the dog. <laughs> By the way, the dog's still sitting over there. Still yep. Good. Stas is still good. Uh, all right, so the pancetta is going in here. We're going to cook this for a few minutes, let it get uh, nice and toasty, uh, get some color to it. Once we take the pancetta out, once we take the pancetta out, we will. Um, Once we get the pan cut out of here, we'll deglaze the pan with some of the pasta water. And then we literally are just going to, and I know Barb out there, Barb who was unnamed, who was late to the show today. Um, Barb who was unnamed was questioning whether we had enough uh, ingredients for the, uh, for the carbonara. But uh, Michelle, are we adding peas to this today? Oh, we can. You guys, you guys want peas added to this? Okay. Yep, we got it. Sure. Yes. If you have so, one. so you can. You, two when you, did. <laughs> you, can, you can add all kinds of stuff to to the carbonara at the end. You can add mushrooms. You can add peas. Those are the two that we see the most. But uh, we're gonna cook this. And is that only two tablespoons of pancetta? Uh, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> our pancetta. That's a quarter. Well, it's, it's four ounces. It's a quarter cup. Yeah, I mean, it says to use what? I have no idea. We always use the entire package. It's that whole protein thing again. <laughs> I think somebody wants more, Panjana. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that too. You can, can do always, that too. You can always add more pancetta. And about the pancetta is cooking. What would you say is your favorite Italian dish of all time? Favorite dish of all time? Italian dish. I was going to say, my favorite dish of all time was standing right next to me. <laughs> What's your favorite <laughs> Italian dish? <laughs> um, I don't know. Top two? I love I love the bolognese that we did because we that, that was the one we won um, best best Italian mm -hmm. in a cooking the best the Godfather sauce. Oh yeah. Um, By the way, yeah, we make we make this Godfather sauce. For those of you who've seen the movie The Godfather, when uh, when they have to uh, cook for all the guys and they're locked in because the gang war is going on, and um, who is it? Um, it's not Tatalia. It's uh, on, Jack. I'm not gonna know this. The other one. Hold it. Uh, uh, Clemenza. Yes, it is. It's Clemenza. Very good. So when Clemenza decides he's going to show. Michael how to cook for everybody. When I was watching that movie one time, because I've watched that movie about 150 times, and um, you know, I'm watching and he's like, hey, do this, pour some olive oil in, pour some garlic in, do this, do that, you put, add some sugar, you add some wine, you do this, and I'm like, we could make that. And so without ever really seeing a recipe for anything like that, we made our own godfather sauce and we won we won uh, a cooking class on that one time. So uh, a cooking competition as a celebrity chef. So this will go just another minute. Um, what other favorite recipes, Michelle? I really like the, uh, the steak Florentine. Oh, the steak Florentine. Well, then there's the fillets that we did yeah. uh, when Lauren was in town. Our, Michael, our there's a Simon, place. Michael, not Simon, Michael. Right, Michael Anthony. Michael Anthony's. So Michael Anthony's down in Hilton Head area. If none of you, if any of you have ever been there, a lot of people, a lot of clients from Northeast Ohio travel down to uh, Hilton Head on a pretty regular basis. And um, there's a restaurant down there called Michael Anthony's and they sell a cookbook. Um, 
that they have a fabulous recipe for. Sorry. They have a fabulous recipe for um, steak gorgonzola, and it's fillets. Um, by the way, I'm just removing. I turned the heat down to super low. I'm just removing the uh, pancetta from this. So the the steak um, gorgonzola fillets gorgonzola. You literally just take some grapeseed oil instead of olive oil. You use grapeseed oil and uh, salt and pepper. Some fillets. Um, you put them in the grapeseed oil. You put them. Put the grapeseed oil in a pan like this, you get it nice and hot. You cook the grapeseed oil, get it nice and hot. You cook the fillets on each side for about two and a half to three minutes. And uh, once you do that, okay. So the goal with this, it's actually a little bit more stuff than I want. Can I put this in something else? Can you put it down? Really? Yeah. Oh, we got some Nat King Cole going. Love Nat King Cole. All right, so we got just enough stuff in the bottom to coat the pan. Now the goal is to use a little bit of this water to deglaze the pan. So let me just take a look at one thing. Yep. So pour a little bit of this water in. Just use a little bit of this water. Glaze, get all the stuff off the bottom of it. Get all the little tiny bits of flavor up so that it can go into the pasta when we put the pasta. Michelle, could you do me a favor? And something like this in a bowl. Just separate it. Then I can add it here. So anyways, on the filet, you cook the filet for about two and a half minutes, three minutes on each side, depending on how you like it done. You heat the oven to about 450 degrees. You remove the filets, you put it on a plate, tent it with some foil, and then you cover, uh, cover that, and then you add some stock, some wine, uh, some garlic, some rosemary, get that sauce nice and hot, and then you put the fillets back in, put it in the oven for about two and a half minutes on one side, flip it, and then cover this side, the, the side that was just down, you cover with gorgonzola or goat cheese, put it back under, let it melt, serve it with some roasted, ro uh, roasted, uh, thank you, maybe. Red peppers, or red um, potatoes, or, and then we serve it on spinach. Yeah, serve it on wilted spinach. <laughs> So for those clients who live in the Northeast Ohio area, what are some good Italian restaurants? Not many. <laughs> why I wanted to cook like this is like there's not many places in Northeast Ohio that actually have really good Italian food. There's a place, Giovanni's. Yeah. Giovanni's up in, uh, up on um, Chagrin Boulevard. Right at the corner of Chagrin and Richmond Road. But that's like old school Italian. That's like you walked into the set of Goodfellas. Man. Yeah. And like that is old school. So we're going to turn the heat down. It says to turn it off all the way. I just turn the heat down to where it's next to nothing. We are going to um, add this. We're going to add some pecorino cheese. We're going to add, um, you get it? I have a, um, some tongs. The uh, the unnamed Rob is killing it tonight. Let me just say <laughs> in the comments. Uh, other than that, we we get it, we hear wonderful things. We've only been there once, so we're adding the pasta. We've got the pecorino cheese. Can I have a little more pecorino cheese? Sure. You never have enough. Cheese. Never can have Amen. enough cheese, right? And then we're gonna add the pancetta back in. Um, down in Canton, there's a place called Luca. There's also a Luca up in Cleveland that we've not been to. Um, I would say Etna in Little Italy, in Little Italy is really good. 
ETNA, like Mount Etna. Um, I've yeah. heard really good things about the Luca and Cleveland. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Some, and if you get this to the point where it starts to look like it's going to stick a little bit, I'm going to turn the heat back up just a little bit. If it looks like it's going to stick just a little bit, you can add just a touch more uh, of the pasta water to it to keep it and just toss it. And then, Rochelle, if you want to add some peas, just go ahead and add whatever you want. Good. Yeah. Right. And then the last thing we'll do before we finish this up, we add a little more cheese, and then we're going to add the uh, the egg, toss it in there, and uh, then that's it. And then it's just a matter of plating this up. So while I'm finishing this up, any place else, um, restaurant-wise, Rochelle, that you would no. throw out there locally? Not that I can think of, no. However, we do have a lot of clients that travel to... Uh, the west coast of Florida. So if you are down in the west coast of Florida, if you're anywhere by Naples, Marco, Fort Myers, the one of the best Italian restaurants down there, not to be confused with Cafe Toscano and Aurora, which is okay. It's a pretty decent place. Yeah. But Cafe Toscano and Fort Myers, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so Diana and Antonio are the owners, and Antonio is from Florence. Was born and raised in Florence. Yeah, and... And, then, and you want to talk about how they met. So Diana went to um, Florence because she was an art major, and they met, fell in love, got married. They met on her first day. Her first day there. In Florence. Yeah. And um, so they opened, I don't, I don't remember how they got to Florida. Maybe her family was there. Yeah. But um, so they moved to Fort Myers in this little place about the size of our kitchen. And it's in a, it's in a strip mall. It's you can never know mall, it was there. But it is the most amazing food. You walk into the place and it just smells amazing. They, they, uh, it's source, like this place. They source them. They, <laughs> You're welcome. They source everything from um, Florence each year. Each year they close the restaurant during the slow season in um, August. in August, and they spend a month in Florence. And when they do that, they um, when they do that, they. Uh, um, go over there, they source all of their ingredients, they create their menu for the next coming season, and then they have everything shipped to their restaurant on a regular basis from Florence, and it's amazing. So yeah, their food is incredible. That's probably the best Italian food, pure Italian yeah. food that we've had in the United States. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, so... Uh, and Al Beckham will be there next week. Al Beckham will be there next week. <laughs> And we're very jealous, but yeah. I'll let them know you're coming. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, time for plating. We need. We'll 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 plate one. We'll make one really nice and pretty, and then uh, we'll kind of uh, let Rochelle talk about dessert, and then we'll sign off for the night. Answer any other questions. And feed our crew. <laughs> and then we'll feed our crew. If you want um, some shrimp with yours? Do you want to? Yeah. Some? Is this mine? Yeah. Yeah. Because it kind of depends who's going to eat what. Yeah. So we'll have this. You need one more pile. Do you want all three piles or do you want pesto on? Okay. Whatever you would like. All right. So apparently this one's mine. So I'll have some shrimp. And because Jesse probably added a little too much pepper on the rabiata sauce with Kaylee, <laughs> I will stick with the pesto. And there's dinner. There's dinner. And then uh, we can do one with the, uh, here, I'll do one with the red sauce. Kate, you're not eating shrimp, right? Uh, no, thank you. Do you want all three types of pasta? 
all three types of sauce or would you i think to? i gotta try each one you okay. guys work right. so hard yeah <laughs> just a small amount please there we go we'll do, we'll do little piles perfect little piles for Kay. <laughs> thank and then you rochelle while i'm doing Kay's plate you want to talk about the uh, dessert and we'll send everybody the uh, recipe for the dessert also so here is our i'm behind you okay Yep. So here is our classic um, caprese torta. It's a, it's actually flourless chocolate cake. So it's, it's made, almond flour. It's almond flour. So it's made with dark chocolate, um, butter, sugar, uh, egg yolks in this, um, and then egg whites. You whip, and then you fold the chocolate into that, and then you bake it. So. We're going to send that recipe to you as well with the pancetta, the drinks, the wine. Mist. <laughs> we'll make sure you get all of it, but that's that's dessert tonight. Right. And we're just about done plating case and then we'll uh, kind of pour one glass of wine, sign off for the night and uh, wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. So. Uh, Hey, you like peas, right? I do. All right. Thank you. There we go. So now <laughs> we actually have pasta three ways. There we go. <laughs> we'll put that over for Kaylee. We'll pour it for some time. Right there. Yep. And we will take our Brunello. You'll see the nice, uh, you can see it's kind of opaque, but it's got a nice deep um, kind of a little more than ruby color. It smells amazing. Yeah, so uh, so with that, Rochelle and I would like to say thank you for everybody for joining. Does anybody else have, I know we're running a couple minutes behind, we're at 7.15. Anything else for the good of the order tonight, Zach? Just thank you guys, and everybody's very hungry, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy All Valentine's right. happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.